Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Chairman. And first, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the organizing committee and especially to Inkai Chow, my friend, for inviting us and for giving us the opportunities to present our data and to uh, discuss the very difficult cases in this symposium. So, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sitting. <laughs> so, my name is Yasushito here. And uh, it's written in English, uh, sorry, in Japanese like this. So this Chinese character <laughs> with the wisteria flowers, I, I think it may be also here. You understand? Okay. So we are from National Kyushu Cancer Center, uh, which, which was uh, established in 1972 and located in Fukuoka City here. And uh, Fukuoka City is at the north part of the Kyushu Island. Kyushu Island is very similar to Taiwan, but in the area. So uh, Fukuoka is at the north part of the Kyushu Island. And uh, NKCC, National Kyushu Cancer Center, is only one uh, cancer center in this Kyushu Island. So we are very close to Taiwan. Uh, the time difference is, well, is uh, only one hour, so we could direct the flight to tai Taipei uh, from Fukuoka to Taipei uh, in two hours and a half. So the, now the National Kyushu Cancer Center is 42 years old. So now the present building is very old. This is very new, so I was so surprised. So, but the uh, present building, uh, so uh, now we are constructing a new building. So it will be completed in one, hour, one year. So uh, I have no disclosure to uh, COI to disclosure. So I'm talk, uh, starting my talk about my topics. I am an Espargeo sergeant, and an uh, independent Espargeo sergeant is a GI sergeant, not a forest sergeant. So I am the board certified by Japan Espargeo Society. And I, today, I will today about the overview of the treatment outcomes of the synchronous espagel, squamous cell cancer, and head and squamous cell cancer in National Kyushu Cancer Center. So, the occurrence of multiple primary cancers in the upper air digestive tract is uh, a well known phenomenon that it has been ascribed to field carcinogenesis. So, like these pictures, we frequently encounter the multiple cancer throughout the SFI. So this case has, uh, has showed seven independent superficial cancers. And uh, alcohol consumption and cigarette smoking, as you know, are the well-established risk factors for esophageal squamous cell cancer, as well as of the head and neck squamous cell cancers. And these two factors, alcohol consumption and cigarette smoking, are uh, the 
to have the side synergistic effect for the development of those cancers. And genetic change and epigenetic changes, as well as their interplay and or crosstalks between, uh, have been uh, identified in the sequential cancer and head and neck cancer. So they are possibly because the asparagus and head and neck cancer and region are exposed to many kinds of similar carcinogens, alcohol, cigarette, or physical stimulation, like the whole food, like that, something like that. So this slide shows the most updated comprehensive registry data of esophageal cancer in Japan in 2006. Among about 5,000 registered esophageal cancers, totally 22% showed synchronous or metachronous uh, double cancers. Among these double cancers, head and neck cancer, except the thyroid cancer, uh, were found in 24%. 24% of the patients synchronously and metachronously. And the synchronous esophageal uh, cancers and the head and neck cancers were observed in as much as about 13% of the case with the double cancers. However, the treatment outcomes of the patients with special cancer and head and neck cancer have been poorly documented. So the aim of this study is to evaluate the treatment outcome of the patients with synchronous special cancer and head and neck cancer at our institute. I'm mainly focusing on simultaneous initial treatments for both cancers. In this study, we investigated 75 patients with synchronous esophageal and head and neck cancers we experienced in our institute during this period. So the clinical pathological characteristics and the primary treatments and the initial treatment performed and the survival rates of these 75 patients were examined. Especially, we focused on the treatment result of 30 work patients who received simultaneous stem radiotherapy, CRT, and 30 patients who received simultaneous surgery. So this slide shows some characteristics of 75 patients. Male patients are markedly predominant showing 14 times as many as female patients. In 71% of the patients, head and neck cancer was first diagnosed, and esophageal cancer was found in the screening examination. 16, 6 plus 10 of them uh, had multiple primary cancers, including head and neck region, uh, head and neck region and esophagus, and synchronously and metachronously. And among the synchronous cancers, uh, one patient had a four independent cancers. I mean, sync uh, head and neck cancer, esophageal cancer, and stomach cancer, and lung cancer. So the com <coughs> so this slide shows the individual characters of esophageal and head and neck cancer. In esophageal cancer, 69% of the cases were diagnosed clinical stage zero. That is the mucosal cancer without any metastasis, or stage one, that is the submucosal cancer without any metastasis. And 25% of them showed multiple esophageal cancer at the same time. In contrast, 76% of the head and neck cancer patients were in a clinical stage 2, 3, or 4. So that means advanced cancers. A variety of initial treatments performed for each cancer is shown. In esophageal cancer, 51% of the patients underwent definitive CRT, 27% did curative surgery and 15% endoscopic resection. Including endoscopic resection, totally 42% of the esophageal cancer was resected. 
On the other hand, 57% of the head and neck cancers chose definitive CRT, and 29% chose curative surgery, and ELPS was performed for one case. The combinations of the primary treatments performed for both cancers are shown. Among them, 31 patients underwent a simultaneous definitive CRT. First, I will present the data about these 31 patients. First of all, the overall survival rate of all 75 patients is shown and the five-year overall survival rate was 39%. So in this graph, uh, six patients uh, died after five years. So uh, four of, out of the six patients died of other diseases or cancers, and the remaining two died of recurrences of the original special cancer or endemic cancer. This slide shows the backgrounds of the patients who underwent simultaneous CRT, definitive CRT. As shown before, there is a marked difference of clinical stage distribution between esophageal cancer and head and neck cancer. If we temporarily define clinical stage 0 and 1 in esophageal cancer as well as head and neck cancer, and uh, as an early stage, which is shown by brown letters, and uh, the other as the advanced stage, which is shown by blue letters. The combination of esophageal and head and neck cancers become at base. So the most frequent pattern was the advanced head and neck cancer, accompanied by an early esophageal cancer, followed by the pattern in which both are advanced. The treatment outcomes of this group are shown. About 93% of the patients could complete the planned schedule of radiation. That, that, that means the patient completion of the radiation was defined as of the radiation dose was over 50 grade. Although the, uh, many patients need the dose reduction of chemotherapy. Patients uh, at adverse effects of the grade 3 or more were observed in 42% of the patients and there was one treatment related death by aspiration uh, pneumonia during the treatment. But most patients uh, well tolerated the treatment. The clinical effects of esophageal cancer and head and neck cancer are shown separately. First, in esophageal cancer, total complete response CR rate was 61%. In stage 0, uh, the remaining one case here. <coughs> and achieved a uh, uh, complete response after adding the blood therapy rounds. But the CR rate of the clinical stage 1, that is the submucosal cancer without any metastasis, was only 58%. This was not good and markedly lower as compared to the, our, our own data of clinical stage 1 solitary esophageal cancer treated by definitive CRT in our institute, which is about 95% CR rate. In head and neck cancer, total CR rate was 42%. However, in many cases, the primary tumors completely responded to the definitive CRT, while the effect for the lymph node metastasis was not, so resulting in non-CR cases. This shows the overall survival rate of these 31 patients and five years, the OS rate was 41%. The five patients died after five years again, and two died of the original cancers, and the other three died of other cancers or diseases. 
the recurrence rate of the CL of both cancers are shown. In a special cancer, 5 out of 18 CR cases were uh, recurred. <coughs> so these two cases, internet cancer uh, or PR cases, uh, response, uh, uh, considered CR because all cancers were removed by subsequent planned neck dissection. So two showed a mediastinal lymph node recurrences and the other three uh, showed local recurrences in this virus. The second patient uh, was cured by salvage surgery, and the third case died of lung cancer. But the other three cases died of recurrence of a special cancer. Sorry. I think the important thing was the, uh, that the these five patients had an early stage uh, espadial cancer and three of them, of these five patients, underwent cisplatin <coughs> bone therapy as a chemotherapy resident. And uh, only one head and neck cancer patient recurred after obtaining CR. Now, we consider the chemotherapy regimens adopted for these patients. 18 cases underwent cisplatin plus 5 grade regimen, which is the standard for the special cancer at present in Japan, while 12 cases gave cisplatin monotherapy. The indication were to determine the case by case in cancer board meetings, including head and neck surgeons. Very roughly speaking, uh, since bloody monotherapy is chosen, head and neck cancer is more advanced than the special cancer, and the plant radiation field will be wide and long. So this way is rather the head and neck surgeon's choice, because they say they have often experienced severe mucositis and subsequent treatment failure. Uh, of head and neck cancer when cisplatin plus fiber if you combined CRT was indicated. However, if cisplatin monotherapy is adopted, higher rate of treatment failure, I mean, including the non-CR cases and or recurrent cases, is observed in stage zero and stage four, stage one especially cancer as compared to the cisplatin plus 5 a regimen. We performed a salvage surgery for two cases. One was a recurrent case after CR, and the other was non-CR case. Both correlated the pharyngolaryngectomy with total aspagectomy reconstructed with gastric blood. <coughs> Both of these have achieved long-term survival with any metastasis. We further subgrouped the patient with simultaneous definitive CRT, depending on the responses of each cancer and examined the prognosis of all cases. In this table, upper line shows the response of the special cancer and the lower for the hedonic cancer. As a result, there were nine CR, CR cases. In this group, there are relatively many long-term survivors. Three patients, number three, four, six, died of recurrences of special cancer or head and neck cancer. However, three of them, number one, two, five, died of other cancer or diseases. So this strongly suggests that uh, careful surveillance of other uh, cancers or uh, and, uh, uh, careful management of general condition are required in the long term follow up schedule. Three patients are alive without any recurrences. There are nine exposure yeah, CR, head and neck cancer, non CR cases. Among them, the primary two of the head and neck cancer responded to CR, but lymph node metastasis not, so resulting in non-CR. 
So most of these cases could be cured by a neck dissection by head and neck surgeons after definitive therapy. The prognosis of this case group means to, seems to be also good, although two patients, number one and two, died of recurrent esophageal cancer and head and neck cancer. Salvage operation was performed for one case, number eight, resulting in long-term survival. Here also, in the cases number three and four, a careful screening of other cancers, including head and neck region, must have been done during the call. There are four esophageal cancer non-CR, head and neck cancer CR cases. The prognosis of the patient, patient very poor and died of esophageal cancer. There are nine non-CR non -CR cases, and the prognosis was so poor in spite of the secondary treatments. Number one case died of aspiration pneumonia during the treatment. This is the only one treatment related to that case. So number nine uh, case has been cured by a salvage following the laryngectomy plus total esophagectomy. <coughs> Next, we examine the simultaneous surgery cases. <coughs> there are 13 patients in this group, and uh, 11 of them uh, underwent operation at the same time and simultaneously, and the other two were sequentially operated. Uh, resection of tank cancer followed by the esophagectomy for esophageal cancer, and uh, resection of the oral cancer followed by the esophagectomy. When an endoscopic resection is included, totally 16 cases were simultaneously resected. Six of them received no preoperative treatment. Four of them underwent pharyngolaryngectomy with total left. Other seven of them received a preoperative CRT or chemotherapy followed by uh, surgery. All patients underwent uh, PLE of pharyngolaryngectomy and esophagectomy. In esophagectomy, the total esophagectomy were performed through the transhiatal route or the right procedure. Sometimes for the reconstruction, we used both the gastric tube or the free, uh, free jejunum. Or sometimes we use the uh, free jejunum plus like hemicolon after the gastric, after the post gastrectomy cases. So this uh, strategy can be a good choice of treatment if patients do not desire the preservation of their larynx, I mean the preservation of the voice. So five year overall survival rate of this group, uh, although there are only 13 cases, with 69%, I think, relatively good. So, in summary, about 40% of the patients with synchronous esophageal cancer and head and neck cancer were initially treated by simultaneous definitive CRT, and it's a five-year five overall survival rate was 39%. So, the definitive CRT can be a good choice of treatment, initial treatment of synchronous esophageal cancer and head and neck cancer considering the uh, preservation of the voice and the struggles in many cases. <clears throat> However, the overall CR rate of esophageal cancer was relatively low, although approximately 70% of the patients were in stage zero or stage one. So this may suggest that the optimal chemotherapy regimen of simultaneous definitive <coughs> CRT for synchronous esophageal and head and neck cancer remain to be determined. When CR was achieved in esophageal cancer by the CRT, good prognosis was expected. Even if, if CR, CR was not achieved in the metastasis of head and neck cancer. 
So simultaneously, you can give CRT will be a good choice or opportunity to make the game when it's the user account is still in the early stage. And the favorable prognosis may be expected by simultaneous surgery for exposure cancer and head and cancer, which of five years of our survival was 69%. However, salivectomy is required in most of the cases, resulting in a loss of life. And therefore, in conclusion, at present, it's very hard to determine the best treatment strategy for synchronous exposure cancer and head and neck cancer because uh, various, many, various, many, many factors should be considered on the determination of the treatment strategy. For example, the stage of each cancer are very uh, important to determine. So, for example, which is more advanced, and can it be possible to leave one cancer untreated for a while? And the sites of head and cancer, I mean the, <coughs> the or a cavity cancer, they, they have uh, different uh, strategies for the laryngeal or pharyngeal cancers. And the location of exposure cancer is also important, uh, which may influence the uh, area of the radiation field. And the laryngectomy, that means the loss of voice, is accepted by patients. This is another very important determinant for, to determine the, 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 the treatment strategy. And then again, the chemotherapy regimen is very important. I mean, the cisplatin monotherapy may be the too weak for this major cancer. So it may be difficult to perform the large scale uh, randomized trial to find the best practice for the patients with synchronous exposure and head and neck cancer because of so complicated clinical conditions and relatively a small number of patients treated each year. So I, it would be necessary, I think, uh, to accumulate the findings obtained from a retrospective study with many cases. So today, my three colleagues in our institute are going to introduce these topics in Japan in addition to our strategy for each of our objects. Egashira, he is our special surgeon, will introduce the present status of the treatment strategy of resectable advanced espadial cancer in Japan. And Masuda, he is the head and surgeon, will introduce the present status of the treatment strategy of head and neck cancers in Japan. And Morita is another special surgeon, uh, will present, uh, will mention the surgical apology relating to, the, to the today's topic. So that's all for my today's presentation. So please let's keep in touch and let's continue to exchange uh, each experience is to improve the treatment outcome of a special Thank you very much.